Here is George's first day of school. This is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, George was so excited. He could barely eat his breakfast. You have a big day ahead of you, George, said his friend, the man with the yellow hat. It was a big day for George. It was the first day of school and he had been invited to be a special helper. George and his friend walked together to the schoolyard. Some of the children were nervous, but George could not wait for the fun to begin. In the classroom, George's friend introduced him to Mr. Apple. Thank you for inviting George to school today, said the man in the yellow hat to the teacher. Then he waved goodbye. Have a good day, George. I'll be back to pick you up after school. The children were excited to have a monkey into cl in class. George is going to be our special helper, said Mr. Apple. And what a helper he was. At story time, George held the book. And at math time, the children could count on George. And at recess, George made sure that everyone had a ball and a well-balanced snack. After lunch, Mr. Apple got out paints and brushes. George saw red, yellow, and blue. Three colors were not very many. George was curious. Can I make more colors, he thought. First, George mixed the red and the blue. <gasps> He got purple. Next, George mixed the red and the yellow. <gasps> he got orange. Then George mixed yellow and blue. He made green. Finally, George mixed all the colors <gasps> and he made a big mess. The children thought the mess was funny, but Mr. Apple did not. Oh dear, he said, we are going to need something to clean this up. Everyone, please sit quiet while I look. George did not mean to make such a mess and he certainly did not want to sit quietly. He wanted to help. It was his job after all. George got an idea. In the hallway, George found a closet, and in the closet, he found a bucket. In the bucket, he found just what he needed. A mop. George was on his way back to the classroom when he heard someone yell. Stop, stop, what are you doing with that mop? The janitor ran after George. Stop, stop. No running in the hall. The principal ran after the janitor. George was going too fast to stop. He grabbed a doorway and swung inside. And sploosh! The bucket tipped, the mop dropped, and George slid across the floor. Now the mess was even bigger. Mr. Apple looked surprised. The principal was frowning. The janitor just shook his head. And George, poor George, he felt terrible. Maybe he was not such a good helper after all. The children felt terrible too. They did not like to see George looking so sad. They thought he was a great helper. Now they wanted to help him. So the children all lent a hand and some lent some feet. And before anyone knew it, the mess was gone. That little monkey sure is helpful, said the janitor. It looks like Mr. Apple has a whole class full of helpers, the principal added. And at the end of the day, when George's friends arrived to pick him up, Mr. Apple said, Thank you for all of your help, George. We hope you come back to help us soon. The children cheered. They hoped George would come again too. 
George waved goodbye to his new friends. What a great day it had been. He could not wait to go back to school tomorrow. Curious George and the Pizza Party. <gasps> this is George. And he was a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, he wasn't just curious. He was excited. So excited, in fact, that he was turning flips and standing on his head. A little girl in George's build building had invited him to her pizza party. George had never been to a pizza party before, but he loved parties and he loved pizza. So he knew it would be good. George, it's time for the pizza party, said the man with the yellow hat. Have fun and remember to be on your best behavior. George got to the party in perfect time. Hi, George, called the little girl. But oh, what was all of this? The children were wearing puffy white chef's hat and checkered aprons. George got a hat and an apron too. The best has yet to come. They weren't just going to eat pizza. They were going to make it too. Everyone will get a piece of pizza dough to roll out and to make a special pizza, explained the girl's mother. There were many lumps of dough, but first let's play some games, she said. Everyone went into the living room to play to play pin the pepperoni on the pizza. Everyone, that is, except George. George thought and he thought, if lots of little pieces of dough were good, then maybe one huge one would be even better. He gathered the lumps of dough together and he squished and he squashed until they became the very biggest piece of dough he'd ever seen. What fun! Maybe rolling it out would be even more fun. George poured flour onto the table and he rolled and he rolled and he rolled with a rolling pin. It was messy work. First, he bumped over one of the chairs. Crash! Then he knocked over a sack of flour. Thump! The flower looked like snow on the floor in the kitchen. George liked snow, though so he didn't mind it at all. Soon he had got the dough nice and thin. But the thinner it got, the farther it spread out. Before he knew it, the dough covered the table, then the chairs, and then it covered George. Without the flower, it started to stick to everything including stick, stuck to George. George stopped to think. Maybe the dough was better off in special smaller pieces after all. George got a pair of scissors and began cutting up the dough into lots of different shapes. He thought everyone would be pleased. George, what have you done in the kitchen? The little girl's mother didn't look very happy. I think it's time for you to go home now, she said. How surprised George was. Just then, the children burst into the kitchen and saw the mess that George had made. George, what happened? asked one boy. The other children looked at the shapes George had made with wide eyes. <gasps> wow, George, I've never seen piece of dough like that before, said the little girl, smiling. Well, said the mother, if you can clean up this mess quickly, George, I suppose you can still stay and make pizza. The children all helped George clean the kitchen. He was lucky to have so many good friends. As they worked, they talked about the pizza. I'm going to make a pizza that looks like a star, said one boy. And I'm going to make one that looks like a house, said a girl. Once the kitchen was clean, the real fun began. All of the children picked out perfect pieces of dough and they got to work. They spooned on tomato sauce, sprinkled on cheese, and added vegetables and lots and lots and lots of pepperoni. The pieces looked wonderful. 
One looked like a rainbow. Others looked like a stop sign. And still another looked like a balloon. There was even a piece that looked like Curious George. Well, George, said the little girl's mother, the pizza tastes great. And thanks to you, they all looked wonderful too. Everyone agreed. It was the best pizza anyone had ever had, seen, or tasted. For the second time that day, George was so happy that he turned flips and he stood on his head. Of course, it was a little harder to turn flips with so much pizza in his belly. But George didn't mind. It had been a wonderful pizza party. Curious George at the baseball game. This is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, George and the man with the yellow hat were going to the ballpark to watch a baseball game. George couldn't wait to see what it would be like. At the baseball stadium, the man with the yellow hat had introduced George to all of his friends, the head coach of the Mudville Miners. He had arranged for George to watch the game from the dugout. What a treat! George got a miner's cap to wear. Then he sat on the bench with the players. He felt just like he was part of the team. The players cheered a miner's home run. George cheered too. The players groaned at a minor strikeout. George groaned too. Then George noticed one of the miners' coaches making funny motions with his hands. He touched his cap. He pinched his nose. He dusted off his shoulder. Hmm, thought George. Maybe this was another way to cheer on the team. So George made hand motions too. He tugged at his ear. He rubbed his tummy. He scratched his chin. Just then, the miners player tagged out on second base. The player pointed at George. That monkey, he said. He distracted me with all his funny hand signs. Oops, the coach had been giving directions to the base runner. George's hand signals had taken his mind off the play. Poor George, he had only been trying to be part of the team. Instead, the Miners had lost a chance to score. George watched the rest of the game from the stadium seats. At, at least he tried to watch the game. There was so much going on around him. There was food for sale. They were shouting fans. There was a woman holding a big camera. The woman pointed her camera at some fans. And look, those fans waved out from a huge screen on a scoreboard across the park. George had never been on TV before. He was very curious. What would it be like to see himself on that big screen? He soon learned the answer. It was exciting. George liked seeing himself on that big TV screen. He, In fact, he loved it. <gasps> hey, you shouted out the cameraman. Cut that out. <laughs> Uh-oh. George had gotten a little carried away. He ran off with the angry camera woman hot on his heels. In the busy stadium, George hid behind a popcorn cart. He waited for the camera woman to pass by. Just then, George heard a no noise behind him. It was a quiet little noise, like a sigh or a sniff. What could have made that noise, George wondered. George turned. There behind the cart was a little boy crying. George wanted to help. He crept out from his hiding place and over to the little boy. Aha, there you are, shouted the camera woman, spotting George. Then the camera woman noticed the teary-eyed boy. She seemed to forget that she was mad at George. I'm lost, the boy said. I can't find my dad. If only there was a way to let the boy's dad know where he was. But there was a way. 
the camera woman aimed her lens at the little boy and there he was on the big screen for everyone to see, including his dad. Is this your child or your monkey? Within minutes, the boy and his father were together again and the man with the yellow hat had come to find George. I can't thank you enough, the boy's father said to the camera woman. The camera woman shrugged. Don't thank me, she said. She patted George on the, on the back. It was this little fellow who found your son. George was the star of the day. Curious George at the parade. This is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, George and his friend, the man in the yellow hat, were in the city for a big holiday parade. They found a special place in the crowd, but an announcement had just been made. The parade may not start for a while, George, the man said. The wind is too strong for the big balloons. Let's go in the department store and wait for a while. George and his friend looked around the store as they waited for the wind to settle down. Suddenly, something strange caught George's eye. What could it be? He was curious. But, th but when George looked out the window, he didn't see anything strange. He saw a parade. He saw floats and clowns. He saw jugglers and a band standing in straight rows. Then George thought he saw an elephant eating a treat. But when George looked out the window, that made George hungry. It had been a long time since breakfast. Now he could think only of finding a snack. Why, there was a treat just like what he ate in the jungle. Fresh nuts right off the tree. George was lucky to be a monkey. He simply climbed out the window and jumped into the tree. Then he pulled and he pulled, but the nuts would not come off the tree. They were not so fresh after all. In fact, they weren't even real. But George did not know that. He pulled harder and harder. The tree began to sway. Suddenly, slam, snap, there was a loud noise. Then crash, down came the tree. Down came George and down came the nuts. Luckily, George was not hurt, but still he did not have a snack. He raced after the nuts. He chased them around the elephant and under the clown, then in and out of the band. My perfect rose, the band leader cried. You ruined my perfect rose. The band leader raced after George. He chased him down the street and around the corner, but he was not quick enough. Where was George? Soon the band leaders tried to search for him and while he straightened out his rows, he did not know where that little monkey had gone. George was nowhere to be found. George was not sure where he had gone either. And the nuts were nowhere to be found. After all, George had lost his snack. And then George had lost his way. Now, how would he get back to the department store? and back to the man with the yellow hat. Just then, a bus was stopping at the corner. George liked to ride the bus. Maybe it would take him back to his friend. Quickly, he hopped on the bus and they went away. From his seat, from his seat up on top, George could see everything. The bus rounded a corner. That was something familiar, but something was wrong. Two balloons had drifted off course and their ropes were tangled. The parade helpers were trying to fix them and a crowd gathered to watch. 
As the bus came to the stop, someone yelled, Catch that monkey! He ruined our parade! It was the band leader, and he was pointing right at George. George did not want to be caught, but there was no way for him to get down. But there was one way he could go. George grabbed a rope and he went up, up, up. He climbed higher and higher. He was a little frightened, but he held on tight. Then he heard someone call, George. It was the man with the yellow hat. George was happy to find his friend and the man was happy too. George swung from one rope to another. Now he felt like he was back in the jungle again when he used to swing vine to vine. Look, someone shouted from below, that little monkey is fixing the balloons. Then George swung safely into the arms of the man with the yellow hat. The crowd below cheered. The ropes were no longer tangled. When George and his friend arrived back on the sidewalk, it was time to start the parade. The band leader was not angry anymore. George was a hero. Even the mayor came to meet George. I hear you created quite a stir, George, he said. But at last, everything is in order. Would you like to ride with me in the parade? Soon, the balloon started moving. The music started playing and the band marched down the street in straight rows. And there, leading the whole parade, was Curious George. Curious George plants a tree. George was a good little monkey and always very curious. Today was a good day to be curious. The man with the yellow hat was taking George to the science museum. The museum was one of George's favorite places. There was always something new to see and something interesting to learn. Often there was a special exhibit. George wanted to know what it was today, but first he had to make his favorite museum stops. The Rocket Room, the Mirror Maze, and the Butterfly Space. Finally, George and his friend made it to the special exhibits room. The sign read, How You Can Take Care of Your Planet. George learned many things. How all people, animals, plants, and air and water on the planet make up the environment. How trees help clean the, keep the air clean. And how people can help protect the environment from pollution and from too much trash. George had a great time and didn't get into any usual mischief. As soon as his friend, him and his friend were leaving, they bumped into the museum director. Dr. Lee looked happy to see him. How is my best monkey visitor? Dr. Lee asked George. I'm so glad I ran into you. I wanted to tell you that we're having a Green Day rally tomorrow at the park. George was curious. What is a rally, he thought. He was sure that the park was a good place for it, though. We're going to plant a truckload of trees and collect used paper for recycling, Dr. Lee explained. We didn't have much time to advertise, but we need lots of volunteers. How would you like to help out? There was nothing more that George liked other than to help. What a great idea, the man agreed. We'll be there. That night, George was ready to do his part for the recycling drive. He gathered every newspaper in the house. He stacked old mail on top of papers. He piled empty cart boxes and food cartons on top of that. What a heap. What more could he add? George scratched his head. Then he took several books off his bedroom shelf. Just as George was about to add them to his recycling pile, someone lifted the books out of his hands. Not so fast, George, the man said. These books are made of paper, all right, but you can read and enjoy them many times over. 
And when you're done, you can donate them to the other kids to your at your library. Reusing is just as important as recycling. The next morning, George and his friend set out for the park with their wagon of neatly stacked paper. Suddenly, the man stopped and said, I forgot my gardening, my gardening tools. So go ahead, George, go on without me. I'll be there soon. As George walked down the street, he spotted several newspapers lying about his neighbor's front yards. George had an idea. Why not? Why don't I collect those and recycle them? And the newspapers, oops, and the newspapers were not the only things he could recycle. He noticed a stack full of paper cups sitting on a table under a tree. Into the wagon it went. And a heap of paper someone left on the sidewalk. George was happy with his great big load. At the park, he found Dr. Lee standing under a big banner. Good morning, George, Dr. Lee said. I'm so glad you came and brought all of your friends. We need lots of help to get the job done. But George turned around and people were running after him. They looked quite angry. The man with the hat, yellow hat just arrived in time. He explained to their neighbors that George was gathering papers for a good cause. They were no longer mad. Then they even stayed to help plant the trees. George, you saved our green day, Dr. Lee said with gratitude. These trees will provide fresher air and each summer we'll have more shade, which means we'll use less water to keep the grass green. Thank you, George. Being a monkey, George had known all along how important trees were. The end.